Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're finally able to share with you our review of Oninaki on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, and has been reworked into this video by me. The JRPG genre is one that's gone through immeasurable change in the few decades that it's been around, but there's something about the old school style of 90s turn-based RPGs that still holds a lot of sway with modern fans. To cater to this demographic, Square Enix formed Tokyo RPG Factory in 2015 to produce a new Chrono Trigger-like release called Project Setsuna, which was then released the following year under the name I Am Setsuna. Two years later, Tokyo RPG followed this up with a spiritual successor called Lost Sphere, which continued the concept of Setsuna while fixing many of the issues that fans and critics found with it. Now Tokyo RPG Factory has produced Oninaki, which notably breaks away from studio tradition by scrapping the turn-based battles in favor of a faster-paced, action-focused battle system like the Mana series. Let's get one thing out of the way right up front. As far as the story goes, Oninaki is a seriously heavy game. Right in the opening scene, we're greeted with a sequence in which our main hero loses both his parents at a young age and is coldly berated for grieving their death. When a person dies in the world of Oninaki, their soul eventually passes on and enters into the cycle of reincarnation. But if that soul is held back, be it by lingering regrets or the grief of their surviving loved ones, the soul becomes lost and runs the risk of mutating into a monstrous fallen creature. To prevent this, the Watchers have been formed and they travel between this life and the next to assist lost souls in completing their passage into death. Though the narrative eventually takes on a broader context, as a menacing villain called the Night Devil is brought into focus, much of the narrative of Oninaki is centered around exploring smaller stories that delve into the nature of life, death, and the moral grays of suicide. For example, all Watchers can engage in a process called tithing, in which they kill a willing participant who wants to get a head start on their next reincarnation, or accompany a frightened loved one into the next life. We appreciate this in-depth look at such a dark concept, but the focus on morality and philosophy surrounding death comes at the cost of an otherwise compelling story. Though the overarching premise of Oninaki is an interesting one, the characters themselves unfortunately fall short, and the narrative suffers as a result. The main two characters, which names I'm probably going to butcher, Kagachi and Meira, are rather one-dimensional and forgettable to begin with, but they seem almost downright lovable when compared to the host of useless side and support characters who possess almost no definable traits. But given that this is a somber release about death itself, perhaps that was the point but we found ourselves very quickly bored and disconnected from the story events as they played out. This wasn't helped at all by the rather hit or miss writing, which does its job of getting the point across, but comes off as being very stilted and forced. This is the kind of script that would immediately fall apart if you were to hear actual people speaking these lines. Now between story segments, you'll spend most of your time exploring and battling through the various locales of the Inner Kingdom which are notably not united by an overworld, like in Tokyo RPG's previous releases. Each level is a little bigger than a typical JRPG dungeon, featuring relatively linear layouts, oodles of fallen hordes, and a smattering of treasure chests. The main gimmick here is that you can swap between the living world and the beyond with the tap of the left trigger, and progression is often tied to jumping between the two. For example, a yawning chasm in the living world is probably passable by using a portal in the beyond, while a shadow-laden area in the beyond will have to be traversed in the living world. The general lack of puzzles in the overworld means that this light dark world concept feels drastically underused, especially when one can see how other similar games have employed the concept, but it's nonetheless a cool way for seeing certain locales from different perspectives. When you run across enemies on your travels, battles play out in a fashion that lightly echoes that of past Tokyo RPG Factory releases, but with radical changes. Kagachi has a series of demons under his command, think Personas from the Persona series, which grant him the usage of different powers and weapons in combat depending on who he has equipped. Up to four different skills can be equipped to Kagachi and his demons at a time, and each one is governed by a short cooldown timer, so battles become a balancing act between your basic combo attacks and your flashier and harder hitting skill attacks. 
Kagechi can only be possessed by one demon at a time, and though the enemy variety seldom calls for specific tactics, you can swap between up to four different demons at a time by using the right stick to select them from a quick menu. As Kagechi both gives and takes damage, he then slowly builds up affinity with the equipped demon, which sees his attack stat gradually receive a boost. Affinity can build up to 200%, but Kagechi's defense starts to take a hit after it passes 150, which makes affinity management a nice risk-reward system to keep things interesting. If you're dexterous enough to dodge enemy attacks and keep out of danger, that 200% damage buff can positively melt the enemy hordes. But it also makes you something of a glass cannon. Whenever you're ready to reset your affinity, you can cash it out by the tap of the L button, initiating the Manifest ability, which sees the equipped demon merging with Kagechi to put him into a kind of super state. Though it only lasts for a limited time, Kagechi's stats receive a huge boost when in this form, and he can't be staggered by enemy attacks, making it an ideal strategy for boss encounters. We rather like the heightened focus on player skill that this new active battle system offers, but as time goes on, it becomes monotonous and tedious. Enemy mobs have an annoying tendency to spawn another wave or three after you've finished wiping out the reinforcements of the mob you first engaged with. And we found that combat soon devolves to being more of a button masher than a skill-based challenge. Upping the difficulty helps to introduce some more slightly interesting stakes, but we wish there were more challenging AI variety to necessitate the usage of the broad array of skills and weapons available to Kagechi. Even so, there's something to be said about the almost Diablo-like effect of simply turning your brain off and indiscriminately slicing your way through enemy legions, and Oninaki fulfills that rather well. This is far from the most interesting battle system we've come across in an RPG, but it certainly has its charms. You'll acquire several demons as you journey across the Inner Kingdom, and each one functions somewhat like the different jobs in the Final Fantasy titles. Dia, for example, gives Kagechi the usage of guns and a fighting style orientated around zoning and range, while Aisha grants Kagechi a big sword and plenty of heavy hitting slash attacks to go with it. Some classes feel much better to play than others, and as you fight with a given demon, you'll gradually acquire soul stones to level them up. Each demon has an extensive skill tree, which can be invested in to acquire better passive abilities and new attack skills, and every few upgrades to a demon's tree will see that demon ranking up and doing more damage overall. Demons can also be kitted out with different weapons to raise some of their stats, and these weapons can be later upgraded at a shop in the main town. You'll amass quite a collection of junk and replica weapons as you wade through seas of enemies, and these extra weapons can then be dismantled to power up the weapons you want to keep, or to equip them with shade stones, which grant them extra passives like paralyze effects or higher skill damage. To be fair, this mini weapon economy and progression feels like something of an afterthought. Oninaki doesn't have an in-game currency, but we appreciate how it offers up a little something extra to keep you invested in the growth of your demons. At its worst, it's a forgettable feature that won't have much of an effect on your overall experience, while at its best, it's a nice way to minimax and squeeze every last drop of efficiency out of your demons. We appreciate the diversity offered by this demon-focused combat system, particularly in the kind of depth and flexibility that it offers for character progression. Though Kagechi doesn't have very much progression of his own, the skill trees and varying effects of your demons you equip ensure that there are plenty of builds you can run with, which is a marked improvement over the somewhat narrow progression systems of Setsuna and Lost Sphere. From a presentation perspective, Tokyo RPG Factory has definitely stepped up its game. Though the character models still remain disappointingly simple, the environments have received a noticeable boost in artistic flair. The living world is defined by a rather monochromatic, somewhat flat color palette, but hopping into the beyond infuses those same environments with a ghostly neon aesthetic that's quite easy on the eyes. Couple this with some impressive dynamic lighting, and you're left with a final product that looks quite sharp, even if it lacks the sort of extra flair that one expects from a retail purchase. Matching the tone of the visuals and story is a similarly morose soundtrack, although it's a little sparser than we would like. Plenty of segments in Oninaki are completely devoid of any music, and there aren't any interesting environmental sound effects to replace it, meaning you awkwardly listen in silence to every grunt and yelp from Kagechi as he explores and fights. As with the last release, we feel it bears mentioning that Oninaki is selling on the eShop for $50. Whether or not the release justifies the price will of course be up to your discretion, but we feel that that is just too high of a price given the level of content on offer here. Now make no mistake, 
Oninaki is a solid RPG, but the inherently simple nature of its design and its relatively short 30-hour campaign doesn't necessarily do the heavy lifting required to meet the expectations of that near full price, which puts it within spitting distance of the likes of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Fire Emblem Three Houses, and Octopath Traveler. As ever, a game is only worth whatever you're willing to pay, but we'd advise waiting for a sale. There's a clear maturation in the work of Tokyo RPG Factory from game to game, as it sticks closely to its traditional ideals while slowly widening the scope of its ambitions. Bearing this in mind, Oninaki is certainly the biggest and most innovative release from the studio yet, but we wouldn't exactly call it the best. Though the premise is certainly interesting, we felt let down by the story in this one, and the combat is less generally enjoyable than the turn-based affairs that came before it. That being said, we also loved the depth offered by the demon system, both in terms of what it offers in character progression and combat variety, and the art style of the Dark World is truly something to behold. We'd give Oninaki a recommendation to anyone who loves RPGs, and although it isn't the best, this is another solid showing from Tokyo RPG Factory. We here at Nintendo Life give Oninaki on the Nintendo Switch a 7 out of 10. If you'd like to read the full written review, you can find it over at nintendolife.com.